Hello. Um, I was wondering what I should talk about this time. Um, uh, oh, award season's over and stuff. Um, guess I could do another one more video about the Oscars. Um, about how it's many films that people would like to see win or are or have a feeling of very or in the realm of really deserving to win that don't and even performers and people of the sort um i already gave my thoughts in the last episode about how i wish dunkirk won picture and director and another award or two. Um, it did win three, so. But, you know, uh, the Shape of Water won those. Um, if not the, you know, again, if not the sh um, Dunkirk or Darkest Hour, you know, I thought Three Billboards was good and thought was in the realm of deserving as much as those two. Though that didn't happen, uh, but... I mean, hey, you'd, it's one of those things, and in some ways, you know, Dunkirk was an underdog in that <clears throat> came out in the summer, and yet so many of the films nominated came out fall, winter, and it's interesting, it's like, uh, I can't really think of the last time a film not released during that time period hadn't won a major award, like Best Picture or Director. Um, not that uh, such of a film hasn't won, but it's been quite a while, it's, or at least it seems like it. Um, I, again, uh, Happy Gary Oldman won, but still, uh, like this is his only Oscar win, is quite sad in my opinion uh, he should have like this should be like his fifth you know Peter O'Toole the great Peter O'Toole yeah eight times he was nominated and uh, didn't win a single time the honorary Oscar doesn't count um, because he wasn't against anyone. Um, perhaps honorary Academy Awards or major other awards like uh, the uh, Irving Thalberg Award, which they give to producers every so often. Uh, perhaps if people were, a bunch of people were nominated for such an award and then one wins but on the other nominees, they could have another chance. They could just insert somebody in there. And then you see how that goes. Uh, then perhaps that could be considered... Uh, they could potentially be Academy Award winners in one way because it was competitive. But uh, for those kind of awards, you know, they just... They specifically... Uh, choose one person um but yeah like Lawrence of Arabia I feel Peter O'Toole should have won and yes Gregory Peck was good in To Kill a Mockingbird but um I don't know I think people have a lot of hype for that kind of film or at least from what I've heard it seems there's a lot of hype for it and uh you know in Again, he didn't give a bad performance, but I mean, I, I've seen some films where Gregory Peck was better. Uh, sorry. Um, he was nominated for a film called, um, <clears throat> Oh, Gentleman's Agreement, uh, and that was a good film. I think he should have won for that. Uh, he was the best. I forget who won that year of that particular film but 
sorry for that. But, uh, yeah, it seemed like outside of him, it was really a slow year for, at least in the act, best actor category. Um, he, I mean, I'm just like, uh, it's just so, it's weird. Why, why give Oscars to people who have, who, like, say, like, gave their perf the best performance or made their the, what would be considered the best film already in their career, but then they get it later. Uh, like Pacino, for instance. Uh, I guess you could say with Peck, again, winning for to Kill Mockingbird. Because also he was never nominated ever again after To Kill Mockingbird. That was his last nomination, so... Perhaps there's uh, something there. I've heard some people say it was a political win because of the climate at the time and the civil rights and su such and the, kind of the subject matter of the film. Like some said there could be a political uh, element of that film that gave it an edge. You know, who's to say, uh, really, but... Also for Peter O'Toole, like Lawrence of Arabia was like his first film. Or at least, of, at least the first film America saw him. Before that film, nobody in America ever heard of the name P Peter O'Toole. And he got nominated seven more times, lost every time. But again, to Al Pacino, you know, he won for Scent of a Woman. When films like The Godfather, Godfather 2, Serpico, you know, films like that that he was nominated for were far superior. I think he could have been nominated and possibly win for Scarface, and I feel he should have won for Godfather, the Godfather films. And I think he should have been nominated for Best Actor for The Godfather, the first one. Because um, in his own words, he had more screen time than Brando, so why was he automatically supporting? Which I feel is a legit complaint uh, on Pacino's part. You know, having more screen time than somebody else would suggest they are uh, the lead. Um, not that Vito Corleone wasn't the lead as well, but Michael Corleone is f very much the main character. Uh, you see more of him than you do Vito. And um, some of the decisions of that kind of thing are, are odd. I felt, like, uh, for Viola Davis, I feel she should have won for Best Actress for Fences instead of Supporting. I feel that Michelle Williams deserves Supporting Actress for Manchester by the Sea. Um, and Emma Stone, I think she could have won for Birdman. I've, again, I've said how I'm not that, I was never fond of Birdman. I thought, you know, it was okay, you just, I mean, I got what it was, doing. I got what the whole point of that film was. It just wasn't... I'm like, meh. I didn't care. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, uh... Though, uh... Regarding that year, uh... Again, I've talked about Foxcatcher, and I think, uh, you know, Steve Carell gave, uh, the best performance of that year and deserved best actor. I feel Ruffalo should have won supporting as well. Um, uh, though J.K. Simmons and uh, Eddie Redman were good. They were very good. And uh, you know, while they aren't my, we weren't my first picks for those categories. You know, they were good. I can't be upset. Or at least too disappointed, I guess. Upset would be kind of dumb, but... You know, a little, you're disappointed your favorites didn't win, but... You know, can't be too... Uh, disappointed. If they lost to somebody that was very good. I feel. Um, again, I made a video of this before. But uh, that was a while ago. I have been last year. Uh, Star Wars losing Best Picture to Annie Hall was a big no for me. Um, 
I didn't enjoy any of all. I thought that was dumb and boring. And I've heard some people say, saying a movie is boring is not an actual criticism. Well, what if the best, if you ask me to describe Annie Hall in one word, in terms of uh, just in general, which it could be either praise or con criticism, that would be boring, because that is what I felt when looking back after I was done, and even now, I'm like, all that was was any or Woody Allen whining about, you know, oh, he's just telling my girlfriend and I, and we aren't together anymore. And, and he's like explaining how this ha all happened and broke up. And people are like, oh, it's like real relationships. I mean, I guess, okay, the story itself could be like that with relationships. Like, kind of how real life goes where you don't get, you don't always get the girl in the end. Okay, yeah, that's, okay, yeah, that's more like real life, but it, it's, the main character is so whiny and neurotic and just annoying person overall. He has to be the smartest person in the room. Has to prove he's smarter than everybody. He's just a ass. I mean, there's nothing there that's interesting to me. I mean, I like some Woody Allen films like Midnight in Paris, for instance, was a... I thought that was a good film. I thought Radio Days was a good film. Uh, those are some a couple examples that I really enjoy. But man, that's... And then for that movie to beat Star Wars for Best Picture... Though they have a, though the Academy has this prejudice against science fiction films, like Star Wars won seven Oscars, six were competitive, won a bonus, or got a honorary Academy Award. But Best Picture, Director, and Original Screenplay all went to Annie Hall. Then like, I'm like I'm not seeing that there. I don't get it. And I've said many times I am biased towards Star Wars, so don't even give me that nonsense of you're biased. Oh, I know I am. Everybody has a bias. It's just like I thought one for the cuckoo's nest was good, but I felt Jaws was a better film. But one well, the Cuckoo's Nest beat it for Best Picture. And sure, there's some disappointment. My favorite, again, didn't win. But Cuckoo's Nest is a good film. I don't really have a huge problem with it winning. I Same with Rocky. Rocky wins Best Picture. Thought Taxi Driver was better. Rocky is good. No problem. I was hoping when I watched it, I was hoping I'd see a similar thing with uh, Annie Hall. And so many people also were like, it's the best Woody Allen movie you'll ever see in your life. I'm like, no, it isn't. <laughs> it is not. Uh, I've seen better. Uh, again, also, I could say that it might not be, it could be because I'm not f fond of that kind of humor. I am not interested in the humor overall of Woody Allen. That kind of humor in me that I don't really laugh at that. That could be a problem. But aside from that, you know, looking at the story, I'm like, like, yeah, the story's okay, I guess. If you got somebody else, I think that if you took that script and got somebody to direct it better, put a better actor as the lead. It could have been a better film, perhaps. Uh, I guess the writing was decent, if, if I was going to be nice. I guess the writing wasn't awful, but I didn't think it was that special. Uh, 
And granted, I said, like, the dialogue for Star Wars was bad. All of them were. Well, it is true, but the story, you know, it's quite interesting. Classic fairy tale put in a science fiction setting, and then just shown and, and presented in such a way that people have never seen before. It's quite interesting, honestly. Um, and also the charm of, of it is also, I think a part of it is because of the dialogue, because of how, like, who talks like this? Well, not everyone's going to talk like how you and I talk today. It's going to be different. In the direction in particular, that was just fantastic. I mean, yeah, people say he's a, Lucas is a bad director, does not have direct actors. Well, people know how to act competently in his films. They figure out how to work with George Lucas's direction. Like Mark Hamill, Gary Fisher, Harrison Ford, all of them. Alec Guinness got an Oscar nomination for Star Wars, I feel he should have won as well. He lost to someone in a film called Julia. Can't remember who he lost to off the top of my head, but. <clears throat> yeah. Oh well. Uh, but yeah, you know, the Oscars, they also have an, a stigma to certain things, like. Science fiction, for instance. And Star Wars didn't win Best Picture. People say, uh, like, Clockwork Orange is science fiction. I never saw it as science fiction. I don't. There's nothing really science fiction y to me about it. Like, uh, oh, it's a dystopian future, so it's automatically science fiction. I mean, what if it was a fantasy film with a dystopian future? I believe. Uh, Lord of the Rings actually takes place in the future. Um, obviously, it's fictional, but that's in many parts. It's kind of you could say it's just uh, it could be along those lines of a dystopian future. Uh, at least as you go into Mordor, um, pretty. Uh, pretty grim stuff going on there. Yet that's not science fiction. The dystopian futures don't necessarily mean it's automatically science fiction. It's not the first, at least I don't believe so. Lord of the Rings is an example. Um, uh, though I guess there could be some that would disagree with that. Alright, that's fine. But I remember reading something with Tolkien or Tolkien, however you pronounce his name. Uh, it's, just, it's like Lord of the Rings is like a dystopian future type film where it takes place in the future. And then I guess if you take that, then you can be like, that's kind of like a dystopian future. In a way, everything's kind of reduced backwards. There's nothing wrong with that, but... Interesting. Um... I mean, Return of the King won Best Picture. I feel that was deserved, and director and all that. Uh, Silence of the Lambs is the only horror movie to win director, picture, screenplay, actor, and actress. I know some will, will say, no, Silence of the Lambs isn't a horror film. But really, it is. The premise, you know, Granted, it's like a thriller, mystery kind of film, but there's horror elements. What Buffalo Bill's doing is horrible and quite horrifying. And the presence of Hannibal Lecter is quite unnerving and disturbing. It's like psychological horror. That's what I'd say. That's why I'd say it's a horror film. Um... Exorcist was a horror film, didn't win. Uh, Jaws, again, that was like a horror film. That's a horror film. The premise alone of a killer shark going around eating people in a 
place. That's a horrifying situation right there. Um, yeah. It's just bias. It's like, they'll honor certain films. If, if it's a huge film. And it's sustained such, you know, momentum over the year, over the year. Depending on when it's released, like it's in the summer of Dunkirk. Had a huge presence over the summer. Didn't win anything really big. Just technical stuff. Um, and again, you know, the whole point of that film was to put you right there in the, in the shoes of everybody. Of Dunkirk. You're there in the air. You're there on the sea. You're there on the ground. You were there with the soldier and the people. You were there in that situation. And bring to light of an event that a lot of people don't really know about outside of, like, Britain and France and, I guess, in a degree, to Germany as well. I mean, I'm sure those three countries, they all know about what happened there, but here in America, we really don't know. I heard about it, but I was in school, like uh, high school, world history, learning about World War II, briefly touched on it, thought it was interesting, looked it up, and I'm like, it's quite an interesting story. But then after a while, you know, I haven't really revisited a, a whole lot since then, but I, I just remember hearing about that and then looking it up at home. Uh, when Dunkirk was announced to be Nolan's next film. And, uh, I hope Nolan's not one of those directors like, uh, George Lucas or Alfred Hitchcock, where he gets nothing. He already has the same amount of nominations as Hitchcock. Uh, he has one more nomination than George Lucas. Finally nominated for a director, and I was just hoping he could actually get it. I don't know. Shape of Water seemed to take it on. Uh, yeah, a film about a nude woman falling in love with a fish creature and then having sex with it. Again, I'm sure there's a lot more that goes along. I'm not saying there isn't. I haven't seen it, but I don't know. I just don't. It just isn't a film that uh, sounds really interesting to me. Uh, if you liked it, that's fine. It just doesn't sound like my cup of tea. Something I would enjoy. I'd probably be like, yeah, this part's weird. Making love and whatnot. That's just me, so. Perhaps it's better than what's uh, described. And if it is, great. But as of now, I have no real desire to see it. If it comes on Netflix or something, perhaps I'll watch it then. Uh, if I like it, I might talk about it here, but, because overall I want to want this to be a very positive uh, place to be, like this little series, I want it to be positive, I don't want it to be overly negative, I guess the Oscars can be kind of negative when your favorite doesn't win, but whatever, that's just what it is. <sighs> but yeah, they're very biased. The Oscars are. A like comic book films have never been nominated for Best Picture. Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Again, I've said like I think Christian Bale could have been nominated for Best Actor for uh, Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, and I think he could have possibly won for. The Dark Knight. I would have liked to see him win. Um, 
But you know, a lot of people wanted Mickey Rourke to win. So, people won. Well, hey, but it went to Sean Penn for playing Harvey Milk. And a lot of people say it was a political win, only because of what was going on at the time, passing the gay uh, marriage stuff. And you know, hey, whatever, you know, passing gay marriage. It's all. It's whatever. I mean, hey, you know, people get married now. Or so I don't have that many people, especially now. You can. Um, again, I live in Iowa. Uh, we were one of the first states that uh, approved of uh, such a thing. Uh, but yeah, um, it was in the mix of that that was going on at the time and uh it's it, even people who are so you know very supportive of that they even wrote in the comments that you know, he was you know that was a political win um and like mickey Rourke deserved it Well, Christian Bale did finally win two years later for The Fighter, which was a very deserving and off Oscar. Um, speaking about Christian Bale earlier, uh, about me wishing he was nominated and could have won for The Dark Knight. You know, same with Best Supporting Actor for Ledger. We would have liked to have seen it win director and picture as well, as well as the other Oscars. It won. Which I guess is all you want, but uh, still, you know, uh, the Oscars have their biases. People don't always get the Oscars when they should. It's always for later on, like Pacino for a performance that isn't bad. Sinfoam was not a bad film, didn't give a bad performance, but over someone like Charlie Ch or Robert Downey Jr. as Charlie Chaplin. I feel he was the best that year. Some say Denzel Washington was for um, Malcolm X. And I can see point there. I personally feel Downey Jr. was better. But, you know, hey. It's all a matter of opinion, honestly. That's what this is. It's my thoughts and me talking about movies and stuff, and movie related things like the Academy Awards. <sighs> it's unfortunate that certain films or certain people get overlooked. Um, and, uh, yeah, Oldman was deserving of the uh, Darkest Hour Academy Award as Winston Churchill, but he was deserving of the Oscar for Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy as well. And I believe also for films like The Contender, JFK, and Sid and Nancy should have gotten them Oscars. At the very least, nominations, because I'm mean, gone. That's just. He's the greatest actor of. I believe he's the best actor to ever live. He's a chameleon. He's he could be anybody and everything. I wouldn't know it. Um, there are other actors who could put in that category, but I put him up top. He's just fantastic. Uh, and then there's some people who haven't been nominated, like you and McGregor. Steve Buscemi, John Goodman, Donald Sutherland. And Donald Sutherland did get an honorary Oscar, but he has never been nominated for an Academy Award, which is surprising to me. For he has never been nominated for a competitive Oscar once. That's just like wow. I 
don't know what to think of it, honestly. Except that's just dumb. Um, the uh, George Lucas uh, said in an interview with Charlie Rose that you know he doesn't have an Academy Award. Uh, he's too popular for that. And when he asked him, "Well, you meant?" He says, "Like they don't give Academy Awards to popular films." And there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, I mean, granted, we, as we see, we've already talked about Lord of the Rings won every Oscar uh, for the last film, Return of the King, including Best Picture and Director. But that's rare. It's rare for a film like that to get all the praise and accolades it received. It's really rare. And I think Nolan kind of fits there. He's popular. People uh, enjoy his films, and they like him. And even if you don't like the films like Nolan makes, like some people don't like the works of Kubrick, or most of them. But you can appreciate the man who created them, those works. Whether you like the films or not, people like Stanley Kubrick. I think people can like George Lucas. People can like Christopher Nolan uh, for similar reasons. Perhaps you might not like their films or many of their films or some, but you can listen to them, watch some interviews, or listen to interviews that they've done. And you know, as a person, as people, they're pretty good. They're pretty cool people. It seems like you know, Lucas and Nolan. I've heard stuff of, you know, Kubrick being a little insane. Uh, but, you know, he was a perfectionist, so... Perhaps insane isn't the best word, but you know, he was very, very... Do X amount of takes, not telling the directors what they... Or actors what they... What he wants out of them. Just do it. All right now. Again, actors will do it differently, or they're gonna do it the same. There, you know, no real directions given. Um, <sighs> but yeah, the Academy Awards. Supposed to be giving out the Oscars to the very best. And yet the very best often get overlooked. Maybe nominated, but don't win. May not ever be nominated at all. Or maybe they're nominated a lot. And they finally win, but perhaps not for the film they should have. Or perhaps that is the right kind of film they deserve the Oscar for. They should have won for another film or two or But yeah, that's just my uh, thoughts on the Academy Awards. I think this went a little longer than last year. Repeated some of the same stuff, though, as last year, but I think I kind of broadened it a bit more. You might not like my thoughts, so... Okay. But I hope you understand where I'm coming from if you watched all 34 minutes of this. And that's all I've got, you know. Uh, I could keep going, but, you know, I think you'd rather me stop now than I would, too. Because otherwise I'm just going to go on and on and eventually talk about nothing. So, till next time, I'll see you later. Peace out and have a good day.